Let's first start by creating an array control. Again, we create our array shell. We place a control inside it to define it to be numeric. As before, we've created a one-dimensional array, as reflected here. If we were to make a duplicate of this by using the control key and dragging, and then changing that to be an indicator, now we have our two copies of this array. One is a control, one is an indicator, and we can hook them up. If we want to modify this to become a multi-dimensional array, we can right-click on the array and choose Add Dimension. Notice how this has created a second index terminal. And also notice now, if we were to hover over the array and resize the control, we can now show multiple columns of this array. Also notice how our block diagram is now broken because we've tried to hook up a 2D array with a 1D array. To solve that problem, we'll add dimension on the second array. And now observe how we have an even thicker, in fact, double line now, indicating that the array is not just a single-dimensional array, but is a multi-dimensional array. So that's the first method of creating multi-dimensional arrays. Another way to do it is by using the auto-indexing capability of for loops, but by nesting multiple for loops inside each other. Let me give an example. I'm going to place down a for loop. Create a constant so that it runs five times. Put our familiar numeric random number generator inside the loop. And hook it up. Because it is a for loop, the auto-indexing has been automatically selected. And what this will do is this will create a one-dimensional array with five elements in it. We've seen this before. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a second for loop, this time inside the first one. Notice how, again, because auto-indexing is the default choice for for loops, we now have a one-dimensional array being created by the inside loop that is then going into the auto-indexing tunnel of the second array. If I create an indicator now on the output of the outermost for loop tunnel, notice how array 3 has been automatically created and has been created to be a two-dimensional array. I'm going to create just a little bit more room so we can see the results of this array. If I add a constant here, so that we properly define both of our for loops, now when we run this VI, what we will observe is two columns have been created, each with five rows. That's because the innermost loop creates each row to have two elements in it. And the outermost loop takes each of those rows and builds them upon each other to create an array which has five rows and two columns.